Hello friends, I'm your host, Dr. Dave Layton, and thank you for joining me in our journey to hope. It is my desire through this podcast to bring you information about how to discover, sustain, or perhaps regain hope. Well, in this episode, we'll be speaking with Becky Beggs. I just recently met Becky, but after just a couple of minutes visiting with her, I felt like we've been friends for years. Now, we also share a couple of things beyond the fact that we're brother and sister in the Lord. Uh, we're both cancer survivors, and Becky is continuing with treatments. Uh, I, I finished mine, actually, uh, October 27th will be my, as the word Becky gave me, my <laughs> cancerversary. I love that term. Uh -huh. Awesome. Well, hello, Becky. Hi there. Hi, Dave. How are you? I, I you know, every day is a great day. It, it Absolutely. It Absolutely. Well, I started a conversation uh, about you, but I'd like you to tell the audience a little bit more about yourself, if you would. Sure. Um, as you said, my name is Becky Beggs. And I have been married for 30 years to my husband, Todd. We have um, two adult sons who are both now married. They've, they've been married, both of them, just over a year. And um, God has always been a huge part of my life. So um, I'm very active in, in my church here. I was um, diagnosed with triple positive stage four or metastatic breast cancer nine years ago in um, 2014. So it was nine years in August um, and some sort of chemo or, or immunotherapy combo. I have been taking for um, every three weeks for the last nine years and before breast cancer, and a few years after I was diagnosed, I taught elementary school. And um, after I was diagnosed, that I was in the I was more in the guidance position at a at a private Christian school here locally, and I did guidance. So they allowed me to stay on, even though it was kids, because I dealt more with the middle schoolers and the high schoolers, and I wasn't in a classroom. So they let me stay on and do that, and I did that for as long as I was able to. And I have retired now from, from teaching and, and that sort of thing. So I'm just um, volunteer at my church and that, you know, just live in life. <laughs> okay, great. And, and we share friends, Steve and Janet Johnson. Absolutely, uh, yes. And they were the ones that recommended I contact you, and I'm so glad that they did. Uh, by the way, I wanted to mention something that happened yesterday at the Cancer Center here where I volunteer. Uh, we uh -huh. had a bell ringing day. Oh, yay! Yay, I'm, I'm telling you, it was just great. And on top of it being this particular lady's bell ringing day, it was her birthday. So, oh, we oh. had so much fun with that. Yeah, how special. Yeah, it, it was great. And, and you know, we make it big. We don't just say, here's the bell, ring it. We uh -huh. line the hallway, the staff, the medical folks, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of loving yeah. going on. Absolutely. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. We just had a great day. <clears throat> that was that was a success. And, of course, she's happy and bouncing mm. and hugging everybody. Yes, <laughs> yes. Everybody. Well, you do become bonded with the people, you know. I mean, you, you're you there and you see the same faces. And yeah. and so, um, you know, it's easy to, to get close to them. Yeah, we share tears of joy on that yes. day. We truly do. Yes. Yes. And, 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 on, and, and, but then, uh, <clears throat> I don't normally go in on Thursdays to volunteer, but I was going in that day to help out. Uh, they wanted me to help orient, uh, a new volunteer. Uh -huh. And I did not know we were going to have a bell ringing that day, but I told, uh, uh, Jennifer, the new volunteer, I said, now this is the bell. And when somebody uh, finishes chemo, they're going to ring the bell. It's a great big celebration. And then about an hour later, uh, the nurse for uh, this patient, she, she says, Hey, we're having a bell ringing in about 15 minutes. We want everybody together. And I go, yay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so Jennifer got to see the bell ringing on her first day as a volunteer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that encouraged her to want to continue to volunteer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I invited you to join me on this podcast and thank you for giving me your time. 
Sure. Uh, we, we, I wanted to have a conversation with you about something that may seem a little bit odd as uh, we're, we're talking about hope, uh, but I think it's very important. I, I've, I found it important in, in my journey. Uh, we're going to talk about how humor helps us, not only in developing hope, but in sustaining hope. Absolutely. And I know you have some stories and I have some stories about things that were just funny. And, <laughs> and, uh, even in my hospital stay, you know, there were some funny things. Uh, uh, one that it, it, it was it was funny, but it, it was had a little bit of a sad part to it. There was a uh, while I was in the hospital, there was a lady that they brought in for care. I'm not sure what her uh, I don't know what her situation was, but. She obviously wasn't a hundred percent in charge of her mental faculties, if I could say it mm -hmm. that way. Mm -hmm. And one evening, late, late at night, she starts screaming, "I want a cheeseburger! Somebody go get me a cheeseburger!" And and uh, she said, "I had five dollars. Somebody go get me a cheeseburger!" And she just kept on. And, and finally, she quieted down. And a nurse came by, and I said, "Hey, hey." I got five dollars over here. I want a cheeseburger too. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you just there's there's just things that happen. So yes, yeah. Well, yeah. All right. Have you heard any good jokes lately? Um, well, I find, like you just said, I find humor to be so important, especially um, especially when you're going through through times like diagnosed with cancer, going through treatments, or or any difficult times. Um, and I love to follow like social media accounts that have funny memes or puns. For example, there was uh, one that said, or I saw somebody, it was a picture of a shirt and it said, I have chemo brain. What's your excuse? <laughs> and so I like, yeah. I like those types of things um, or, or they, you know, funny questions that people will ask you that only other cancer patients will, will understand. But um, a good friend periodically, she sends me jokes and so just, you know, just like, here's to make you smile today or, or something like that. Well, the one that she sent me recently, it said, um, hospital rules require a wheelchair for patients being discharged. A student nurse walked into the hospital room and she found an elderly man already dressed and sitting on the bed with the suitcase at his feet. So he insisted that he didn't need her help to leave the hospital. But after, you know, she chatted with him about the rules and how important it was to follow the rules, he reluctantly let her um, wheel him to the elevator. So they're in the elevator and on the way down, the student nurse asks him if his wife was meeting him, um, you know, down to pick him up. And he said, I don't know. She's still upstairs in the bathroom changing out of her hospital gown. <laughs> so... He wasn't the patient after all, <laughs> oh, <laughs> which boy. got me thinking. I think it's funny how that how I've been going to the same place for nine years and they still, well, they have to name and birthday, name and birthday, oh, name yeah. and birthday, name and birthday. I mean, I've been telling the same people my name every three weeks and I'm sure they know my birthday by now, yeah. but you know, hospital rules. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, one night in the hospital, uh, they told me, Mr. Layton, don't get up. You you do not get up. Well, I had to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So it's like I, I, I wasn't ready to go to the bathroom with a nurse. So, right. <laughs> you know, I'm one of them guys. So <laughs> uh, I got up, and sure enough, uh, I blacked out, banged my head mm -hmm. on the wall. And then I had to confess, of course, you know, and uh, so I get back into the bed and I, I didn't hurt myself, but I put a big goose egg on my head. You'd have thought I was yeah. going to war with the hospital. And, and <laughs> I look back on it and, uh, you know, my nurse had no sense of humor. Oh, no. And, uh, she told me, you get out of this hospital bed again and I'm going to put you in one of those little nighties that's open in the back. And it's like, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I will not get up again. I promise you. <laughs> well, I, I was reading a story that day. My wife and I. Uh, you know, one thing that we need to do now uh, as cancer survivors is really pay more attention to our health than perhaps we did in the past. And right. so we're, we're watching our numbers of steps we do every day and and all of that. And I, I read a story that, that was kind of cute, little short thing about a little girl wearing a Fitbit watch. Uh, it says, one day, um, 
uh, one of my wife's third grade, not my wife, I'm reading the story. Uh -huh, right. <laughs> one of my wife's third graders was wearing a Fitbit watch, which prompted my wife to ask her, are you tracking your steps? No, said the little girl. I wear this for mommy so she can show daddy when he gets home. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that was funny. Just trying to, that trying to funny. cheat on the number of steps. Never All thought right. about doing that. <laughs> All right. Well, let's talk about humor a little bit. Um, I, I like to define words so we understand Mm -hmm. As, as uh, you know, sometimes people say, well, my granddaddy used to say so. My granddaddy used to say, are we breathing the same air? Meaning, <laughs> are we understanding or using the same sure. words? So uh, I like to define words. And, and so we're talking about humor. And mm -hmm. uh, I looked up some definition. Uh, tendency of experiences to provoke laughter and provide amusement. Okay. And, and we do that. We, we, we laugh yes. at ourselves or situations, uh, all of that. So I usually think of humor as finding something funny in a situation. Mm -hmm. uh, the definition went on to say that it, it came from an ancient Greek uh, medicine that talked about humors. These were um, elements within the body that controlled health and emotion. And then I remember, you know, when they used to bleed people to over right. they would talk about your humors are out of focus or unbalanced. And so they'd bleed you of all things. Right. Um, so anyway, that was a, but it did talk about that. It's a, it controlled human health and emotion and humor does that. Absolutely. It has an impact on it anyway. And so uh, I, there was some other interesting definitions. It was a mood or state of mind. Mm -hmm. And didn't, didn't you notice that in your treatment and ongoing treatment that our state of mind is just so important? Absolutely. And I, and I love that definition, a mood or a state of mind. I resolved, even though they had one in my hospital room, I resolved not to turn the television on. I, mm. I did not need any negativity going on. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and in our treatment area at the cancer center, there's no televisions or radio uh -huh. or anything like that. Now, somebody brings in uh, their iPhone or iPad or whatever, sure. you know, they'll put on earphones. That's fine. But right. we don't provide it. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, we have, we, <laughs> we do have in our, in our like little chemo bays, um, they do have TVs, but hardly anyone ever has it on. Yeah. Hardly yeah. ever. But somebody um, perhaps early on in their treatment uh, or on the outside looking in, uh, as it were, with someone who's going to be receiving treatment, you know, when you get a diagnosis for cancer, that's pretty serious. Absolutely. And not just cancer. I, I don't want to dwell just on that. Uh, it can be a family relationship, a lost uh, a, a failed marriage, uh, right. income, lost job, any number of these tragedies in life. And right. you say, well, how can you find humor in something like that? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's probably not easy sometimes, but uh, we can still look at things and try to find a positive side on it, as it were. Yes. It help, yeah. helps us through some of those tough times. I want to hear your thoughts on some of this, please. Okay, sure. Well, I completely agree with you that humor, you know, is just so important and it's and it's not easy. And sometimes the easier thing to do is just let yourself get down and wallow, you know, in self-pity. Um, and, and like I said, I love the definition, the mood or state of mind. The Bible tells us in First Thessalonians, you know, rejoice always or always be joyful. You know, always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in all circumstances. So you think, well, always be joyful. Okay, I'm sitting across from an oncologist who says the tests aren't coming back the way we expected. And now we're seeing cancer. Not only do you have the tumor in your breast, but now we're seeing it in your liver and your bones and in your lungs. Um, so you can't have surgery. And, you know, we're going to focus on your quality of life. Okay, well, how do you find joy in that situation? You know, so um, she and then she left the room and gave Todd and I some time and, and we just cried 
And I remember that day. That day was um, was very um, well. I remember it vividly. <laughs> Let me just say that I remember just that feeling of despair. And then my we had gone to my mom's house, and my sister was over there. She, my mom, just lives like a mile away, and um, and I remember my husband and I driving home, and we said, you know, God's got this. God is in charge. And we have the choice as to how we are going to, to deal with this. So for me, gratitude and joy or humor are kind of linked together. Um, it's my choice. I have a choice. When you think of a mood or a state of mind, I have that choice. So am I going to wake up and choose to find the humor and the joy in things? Or am I going to wake up? and choose to be negative and grumpy and 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 those sorts of things so i decided um early on that i was going to choose joy and i was going to choose humor because being grumpy or being negative about it doesn't change the fact that i have stage four cancer and that this this is me you know i'm going to deal with this for the rest of my life so i changed my perspective and thought okay i'm going to be positive and i'm going to try and find the humor be able to laugh at myself not take myself too seriously and um which which i you know never really had a problem with you know i've never taken myself too seriously but um when I wake up and I have a gratitude journal, when I wake up and I and I write things that I'm thankful for, sometimes they're silly things, you know, um, it doesn't it's it's not always, you know, that something has just happened that's profound and I go right that I'm thankful for it. Sometimes I, I'm thankful that I woke up. I'm thankful that I can see, you know, I'm thankful when I hear my kids laughing that just I, whatever it is, whatever just hits me that I'm grateful for, I write down. And then that, that uplifts my spirit and makes me joyful and starts my day off so that I'm going to, um, to set my mind to be positive. And I keep that, that gratitude journal out. So throughout the day, if something happens that, that I think, oh, you know, I'm really grateful for that. I go write it. And so I'm, you know, just got my list and and I'm going to keep going. But not everything is going to be laugh out loud funny, you know, when you're going through this or when you're going through any difficult time, any health diagnosis or like you said, loss, um, whether it be whether it be you've lost someone because they've died or you've lost someone because it's a broken relationship. All of all of that is trauma. All of that is is hard and difficult times for us. So when we try to find the humor, sometimes we have to be intentional about it. You know, we have to look for it and, um, and just not take life and our circumstances and things too seriously. Even, even though there are times that we're going to have to take it seriously, like you said, you know, you and your wife are, are more focused on your health and and things like that now, but still my circumstances being grumpy is just going to make everyone around me not want to be around me and make them grumpy. It's not going to take away my cancer. So why be miserable when I don't have to be? Uh, that's every bit of that is good. I, it, it is a challenge. And mm-hmm. I know, like you said, you and Todd had that short time uh, and, and Lynn and I have had that time. I, I do remember one time, however, um, it, it must have been maybe after the first couple of treatments there at the mm-hmm. cancer center uh, after I was out of the hospital. Outside the main door leading into it, there's a couple of benches. And so I was sitting there like a little old man. <laughs> I got my walker. <laughs> I was too weak to stand up and walk on my own. Right. Right. And uh, they made me wear that bracelet that says risk fall, you know. Oh, yes. Oh, I hated that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so Lynn's gone to the, go get the car to come get me. And I'm sitting there, and I had a pity party, I, uh-huh. I, you know, woe is me moment. And, and I said, yes. wait a minute. No, I'm on the way to cure. Why? No, mm-hmm. I am not going to give in to this. But I did have that moment. But yes. uh, like you, I, I said, not not going to give in to this. Everything yeah. is on its way. 
Right. I, I read something early on in my diagnosis that said, allow yourself those moments. Allow yourself, mm -hmm. you know, a day if you want to stay in bed all day. Yeah. You know, allow yourself that, but don't stay there. Well, uh, the, and, and not every day was going out in the field picking daisies. Absolutely not. Right. There were, there were moments, uh, you know, I'm halfway through my treatment and I, I had misunderstood, uh, Lynn and I both misunderstood. We thought that this was going to be you know, on a particular day in that June was going to be the end of my treatment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the doctor that day said, no, you've got to go all the way through October. And it was like, Oh, <gasps> Oh, I was ready to be done. And it's like, yes. oh. <laughs> but I, then I said, wait a minute. No, let's let's kill this thing. Let's make yeah. sure. Absolutely. And and so, yeah, we didn't give in to it. But it was like, oh, oh man, I've got to do. Something. Absolutely. By the way, I love I love your blog spot that you call us. Uh, stage uh, four is just a number. Yes. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. that's right. It is. Uh, just a number uh, uh, yes. for diagnosis purposes. I'm not going to let that defeat me. All right. Absolutely. So trying to help people find humor or at least the positive side of something is, is a challenge and they're facing uh, in so many ways. I know when I got the news first time I've ever had anything like that. And so how we can help people find uh -huh. Uh, a positive, and, and let me share just a few thoughts I had, and then I want to hear your thoughts as well. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them is as a care provider or somebody interacting with them, we can try to be positive. Mm -hmm. Did you notice when you were undergoing treatment, people would come up and they would want, they're, they're wanting to talk and then encourage you and they'll say you know i had a cousin that had something like that and, oh man he died <laughs> oh, but that's not going to yeah. happen to you <laughs> like, absolutely oh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank you for telling me about your cousin <laughs> yeah so be positive is one thing you know with people yes. uh, as you as you can and um uh try to under understand them and and right. show them love and compassion. Well, we're supposed mm -hmm. to do that anyway, show the love and compassion of our Lord. Absolutely. But we need to do that, especially yes. with somebody. So those were just some of the ways that I try to be positive with mm -hmm. folks. And uh, one of the things I stay away from is, oh, I know exactly how you feel. Oh, uh, right, right. Everyone's different. Right. And even, even between us, who both have had cancer. Yes. Still, you know, it's still different. Yeah. So your thoughts on that? How, how do you help uh, folks find that positive side of, a, of what could be a challenging, tragic situation? Well, um, the same thing. I, I will try to be positive. I remember um, the night before, or, or it was the Wednesday night at church, and I think my biopsy was on Friday. So, you know, we didn't know, it, but the surgeon had had sure. alluded to, you know, yes. we really think that this is what it is. Um, so I was at church and I was on the family prayer list. Well, bless his heart. The gentleman who was praying kept praying for my autopsy. Oh, no. <laughs> and not my biopsy. Oh, oh And no. he said it twice. And then he said it in the prayer because he read the list and then he said it in the prayer. Well, we have a gentleman who works for the um, county, I guess. I don't, I don't know. But he does autopsies. He's a medical examiner. And he came up to me after and said, we don't make appointments for that. You know, <laughs> we don't make appointments. <laughs> You're oh, not no. allowed to make an appointment to come on Friday for your autopsy. Yeah. So oh, no. It's, it's things like that, that, that when everybody was down, you know, thinking, oh, she's got a biopsy and she's young and, you know, all of this. I laughed so hard that night when that man was praying for my autopsy. And yeah. then the guy who does autopsies walks up and says, oh, we don't make appointments <laughs> for that. So, you know, I just, I try, I try to be positive and let other people see me positive. And, and I would say, find, you've got friends who make you laugh. You know who they are, you know, find those people. And, and when you're, when you're feeling low or when you just need it or get a healthy dose of it, you know, have a time where you get with them often and, um, 
and just just enjoy their company. And and if they've made you laugh before, chances are they're still going to be funny and they're going to make you laugh. My oldest son, Luke, I think it's his mission to make me laugh every day. And that's been his mission since he could start talking. And and he's pretty much succeeded. I mean, he is he's the guy I go to when I when I want to laugh, you know, because it's not that he's telling jokes or doing anything like that. He's just funny. And maybe not everybody thinks he's funny, but I think he's hilarious. Uh So so I you know, I, I make sure that I surround myself, you know, with That's people right. like that. Yeah. Um, I try to be that at the cancer center. I, I, all of us do, you know, we're yeah. uh, helping people through it. And and so, yes, we greet people with a smile. We love on them, take care Absolutely. of them. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you can listen to podcasts. You can read books um, that are all lighthearted or funny. Mm -hmm. You can um, listen to comedians. My sister, I I never, you know, I'm not, I'm not one that goes on YouTube and just watches videos. I'll go on YouTube if there's something specific that I want to see or somebody that I'm following that has put a video up, but I I just don't go on and, and just pick videos and watch them. Well, my sister and I were together and she said, I was at dad's house a few weeks ago and we started watching this comedian and you may have heard of her i think her name is Jeannie robertson okay Jean robertson okay she's like six two i think she just she recently died um but but she is a comedian and she was hilarious um just clean you know but so funny so you you know you can find people like that you can go online and and watch something funny or or you know if you do like those videos that are funny you can do things like that um train your brain to look for the humor in situations something else that i try to do with folks is in in chatting with them and whatever Mm -hmm. is to try to get them to see that they have been given a gift Yes. And and that's a challenge, obviously, for somebody in the moment that's hurting. Yes. But I found yes. very much so uh, that what I went through has given me a gift. Mm-hmm. Opened so many doors, opened yes. so many relationships with people, and mm-hmm. and gave me insights and understanding into something that I intellectually knew about. But, right. but now, uh, hey, we've been there and we understand. Right. And again, I'm not sharing the exact feelings you are, but I, I have a pretty good idea that you're being challenged. And, and so it's a gift that uh, I, I just appreciate. Now, yes. uh, there's some things I'm doing now, such as this podcast and some other mm-hmm. things that I wish I could have been able to do 20, 30 years ago. We've got to learn to do things on God's time. Exactly. And, and, and use that moment if we can. Is it? Yes. And again, it's not just an illness that we're going through, but if you've been through a challenging time in marriage or finances or job loss or something, again, mm-hmm. you can use that to be a, a, a person who can listen and understand from other folks. Exactly. You know? Yes, I totally agree. And, and having cancer, I've, I've said many times, it's a blessing. <laughs> it blessed my life. <laughs> and people... People will look at me like I'm crazy, but I'm a totally different person now than I was nine years ago. And oh. and obviously through nine years, I would have changed and I would have grown some, but not the way that I have. I, I have grown spiritually. I have grown um, relationally. You know, I take relationships much more serious and, am, and am try to be more connected. Yes. I, uh, I do... I started early on um, when I couldn't teach anymore. I started a t-shirt business and I did that for a while where I just, I made positive inspirational shirts and a lot of cancer type t-shirts. Well, I don't, I don't do that anymore. Just, it just was getting um, a little, a little difficult to keep up with for, for just me. And I didn't want to get bigger because it was, it was, it was, just too demanding on my health, my strength, you know, all of that. Sure. But what what came out of that that I do, every time I go for my treatment, I bring chemo bags. 
It, okay. I just, I call them chemo bags and I bring two or three every time I go for treatment and my friends have heard, you know, cause I posted pictures or something of me with, with somebody that I've given a chemo bag to and, and people have heard about this and gotten on board and they'll send me items to put in the chemo bags or, the, or they'll give me money to, to donate towards the chemo bags. So I've been able to keep it up because what I did do was take the profits from the t-shirts and I made the chemo bags. Okay. Well, well now that I've given up the t-shirts, people have stepped up and they do that. And it's, it's so nice on the day that I have treatment, a day that I'm dreading to be able to go and try to encourage and uplift other people who are also there for treatment. So it's a terrible day for all of us. It's a yucky day for all of us because even though we might not be feeling terrible before the treatment, we know that we're going to not probably not feel good for the next couple of days to, you know, however long. So um, I, you know, that, that has been something that has blessed my life that, that I never would have done had I not had cancer. I never would have thought about it. I, I, I published a book. I wrote the book while I was going through uh, the, the treatment mm-hmm. and and uh, then had it published, Our Journey to Hope. And it's not about me. It's about hope in general and, and uh, drawing closer to our Lord where we find hope and grow in hope. Um, I was talking to somebody yesterday about it, and I said, you know, I'm amazed that I actually completed that book while I was going through chemo because you and I also share chemo brain. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, talk about humor. You know, that put us into some humorous <laughs> situation. Uh, maybe, maybe the fellow that prayed your, that prayer about autopsy was struggling with some chemo brain too, because I had trouble getting words right back yes. or getting the word out or whatever. Yeah. So, remembering, <laughs> remembering what oh, you're going to yeah, say. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it was frustrating, but it was often hilarious, and I'm sure it was entertaining to everybody around us. You know, we'd get to laughing. Yeah. Okay, and and it's okay to laugh. Yes, absolutely, it's okay to laugh at ourselves yes. uh, in those situations, and and you know all of that. Uh, I mentioned uh, in in my uh, notes here. I, I I remembered a friend of mine who um, years ago uh, when I used to work in business and industry of of bringing training programs to people. Uh, this particular presenter, um, Jenny Nolan was her name, she had a presentation she used to do called Life is Not a Stress Rehearsal. Oh, that's and, good. And, and she was a humorous person and she would bring that in there. But I remember Jenny um, talking about that. Life is not a stress rehearsal. There's enough stress already in life. We don't have to yes. rehearse it. It's out there. All right, I wanted to move on into another thought here. <clears throat> humor has a way of keeping us together. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. we, we talk about, okay, I got to get it together. And, right. and so humor helped me uh, keep myself together, uh, but it, 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 it also extended to helping others uh, right. kind of share in yeah. something. And, and we laugh at, hey, you remember that funny story about so, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So it, 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 it helps us build on those pleasant memories with someone. Right. So, uh, again, uh, your, your thoughts on that? Oh, I, um, you know, I, I totally agree. Of course, I'm having chemo brain right now okay. where I'm thinking, okay, well, I, 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 I remember <laughs> Uh, you share some of those in your blog post. Yes. And and that's why I enjoy reading those. Uh, yes. And, and I try to keep those blog posts positive. Uh-huh. They're not always because well, I want to be real. Sure. I want, I want, I want to be real. I don't want people to, to get the misconception that, that I just run around laughing all day because I don't, but I do laugh several times a day. Stress now and and seeing stress in other people is I'm so much more aware of it. Oh, yes. Because I think you're stressing over that. Like if, if somebody has their work life balance out of out of whack, you know, when they work, 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 and they're always stressed out and take no time to enjoy life. And I think this is you only get one life. 
You know, you need to enjoy it. Yeah, you got to work, but you can you can have boundaries and you can you can work and you can enjoy life. You don't have to be stressed out all the time. Um, and definitely you said it's OK to laugh. I think laughter is necessary. I think it's needed if if we're going to get through the difficult time. For me, I think I couldn't get through the difficult time. One, obviously, without God, without family, my church family, my support, you know, system. Um, but without laughter, I, yeah. I, I don't know how people could do it. Yeah. Because otherwise, I don't know. I don't. I don't like to feel yucky. <laughs> you know, I don't like to feel down in the dumps and. And I do. And I say, OK, I'm going to give myself three hours. And after three hours, I'm going to either, you know, go out and water the plants or I'm going to find something else to do that just kind of gets gets me going and gets me out of that mindset. I'm known around the cancer center as the moon pie guy. <laughs> on, on the day that um, my doctor told me, OK, you are officially in remission. I went out to the uh, reception area and we had a snack bar there and they had mm -hmm. moon pies mm -hmm. the snack bar. And so I declared good days as moon pie Mondays. Oh. And so every Monday when I go into the cancer center, I try to take in moon pies and have them available. The other day I had a lady, bless her heart. She's one of uh, the, the patients that we know uh, we're mm -hmm. we're treating her. She's ending the near time of her life. So, okay. And, and right. so, um, we we had to lift her out of the vehicle to put her in a wheelchair, and then lift mm -hmm. her out of the wheelchair to get her into the treatment. Bless her heart, sweet lady. Yeah. And her son was with her, and um, you know, I got her a warm blanket and a pillow, and I said, "Okay, would you like a snack or something?" And and uh, the son he looked at me. She says. Or he said, I saw some moon pies on the snack bar. She loves chocolate moon pies. Oh, I couldn't get over there fast enough. I went and got her one. When I gave it to her, she smiled. Oh. I had to go to the supply closet and get rid of some emotion. Absolutely. In fact, I'm, whew, stop. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so, you know, it's the little things to bring joy in somebody's life that Absolutely. brings joy in our life yes, as well. And it, yes. it just helps us. Okay. Yes. And, and so um, it does have a way of keeping us together and sharing and doing that. I'm, I'm so I thankful agree. that it's a blessing that God has given us the ability mm -hmm. to have joy and to share joy. Mm -hmm. So let's do it. It's a gift from God. Let's yes. do it. Yes. Well, a fair question is how can I hold on to humor and hope when we just seem to be surrounded by so much misery, people that are suffering and struggling and, and grief. And, and so um, my thoughts on that are, you know, we recognize uh, that um, it's there, but don't let it control us. You right. control it. You, can, you, you, you mentioned about choices. We can choose. And uh, that's something that my charge nurse in the hospital told me uh, mm -hmm. when, when I was in a very deep moment there at the hospital. She said, you control it. And, and that, was, that was very good for me to hear that. It, it's not going to define us. And I made the statement, I don't want to go out screaming. I want to go out laughing. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Absolutely. I wrote up my funeral plans. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted it. I want songs of joy. Uh, mm -hmm. I want. I want the funny memories that I unfortunately have provided people with a lot of ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> but I told them. I said after after the memorial service, I don't want a regular dinner. You know, where people sit around and eat fried chicken. I love ice cream. Let's have an ice cream party. Yeah, so that's, that's that's what I want. I, you know that. Yes. All right. I, I'm talking too much. You're my guest. No. I want to hear from you. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm loving this. Yeah, I've I've written out um, things. You know, I have a notes on my notes app on my phone, and if a thought comes to me that I want for my celebration of life, yeah, I put it in there, and I, and I'll tell my boys. They they both lead singing at church, and I'll go. Oh, I want you to sing the song, and they'll be like, Mom. 
we're not going to be any frame of mind. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it. And I'm like, okay, if you can't sing it, then I want Ed Sheeran to come sing it. And they're like, okay, <laughs> Ed Sheeran's not going to come sing at your funeral, mom. And so, you know, I mean, we even find humor in that. Yeah. I don't know that they find it as humorous as I do, but, you know, <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, if you won't sing it, maybe beforehand you can record yourself singing yeah. it. Yeah. Well, uh, God's given us so many gifts, and, and sometimes it takes um, a stressful moment or a challenging mm -hmm. moment to let us realize that those are gifts. And, and then when we discover it, that's the question. How can I use this as a gift? How can I use this to glorify God? Yes. And that's yes. just such a point of it. What else, Becky? Well, I mean, I just, you know, I can think of so many things that that I have ha found humor in. Um, shortly after I was diagnosed, I had read a book years before called The Fault in Our Stars. I'm and sorry, it, it say that again. The Fault in Our Stars. The I read a book in our stars. Okay. Uh huh. And it, it it's a it's a it's a, like a teenage young adult book, and one of my kids that I was teaching had said, "Oh, Mrs. Beggs, I think you'd love this book." Well, I read it, and I did love it. Well, but it happened to be about kids with cancer. I didn't have cancer at the time. It was a great story. I I told her, you know, I loved it, and it gave us something to talk about. And I was, you know, her language arts teacher, so you know. It was very good that they were recommending books to me because then I knew they were reading. And yeah. <laughs> um, so the movie, they made a movie out of it. And I really wanted to see that movie. Well, that's when all the biopsy and everything was going to happen. So by the time I, I got to see it, it had already come out and it was streaming on, on TV. So one night, Todd said, let's just watch a movie. And I said, oh, okay, there's been one that I've been wanting to watch. And so we watched The Fault in Our Stars. And I think we started at like, I don't know, about 10 at 10 at night. And I can't remember if this is just after my diagnosis or if it was a week later when they told me that, that it had metastasized and it was a lot worse than they thought. So we watched this movie. Well, uh, I don't want to go too much into it and spoil it, you know, if any of your listeners are going to watch it. But anyway, it's, it's a very good movie, but it's sad. So we cried. My husband and I cried for like, I don't know, to like two in the morning. <laughs> yeah. But we were crying and we were laughing because he's like, you read that book. You uh, knew what was going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Why would you recommend that we watch this? So, you know, we laugh about that now that that, that was so silly of a movie for me to recommend that we watch. But even that night, we cried and laughed. And, and I can think of different things just through through the nine years that have happened that that were sad, but that we could find the humor in. And, and I would just encourage your listeners to look for that humor in difficult yeah. times, to look for for the positive. And and if you can't find it, then be the positive. You know, you be the positive person in that situation and try try to have that be contagious for the people that you're around. I'm I'm glad you said that in in ending about you be that person. Uh, so much of the research that I've done about hope and uh, also dealing with depression and associated things, uh, consistently throughout all of this research, people say, get out of yourself. Mm -hmm. Reach out to others. Be something to others. Right. And uh, that way you're not dwelling within yourself. You're, you're getting out there doing things for other people. And that that's just such a way and and helping them see positive things is is uh, uh, such a vital part of that and being the positive thing. Uh, I tell people at the cancer center, my job is to make this the best day you've ever had. Oh, and so if nice. I see somebody yes. smile or I help them get feeling better mm -hmm. um, and, and 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 by the way, not just for the patient, but for the caregiver. Oh, oh, the caregiver plays a vital part. Absolutely. Oh, I, I, I just have so learned to appreciate 
uh, that yes. husband or that wife or that mom or that daughter or son, you know, <laughs> or, or friend the, uh, so many times. Yes. We, we have a saying at our cancer center, uh, no one walks alone. Yes. And that is so true about life in general. Uh, Absolutely. So I want to be the person to take away that feeling of alone. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Becky, wow. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, uh, we will be in touch. I reserve the right to have you back on in the future. <laughs> Ab we, we absolutely. Can, uh, I would love we to. Can share some more time. Okay. Sure. Let, me, let me wrap up. And again, Becky, thank you. Uh, it, it's like I said, we became friends almost immediately. So yes, that's great. All right. Well, friends, thank you for joining us together as we journey to hope. I invite you to follow this podcast so you can continue to gain insights into not only our journey to hope, but how we can help others in their journey. I invite you to contact me if you have any questions or comments, or you wish to share with me something you've experienced in your journey to hope. My email is ourjourneytohope at gmail.com. That's our journey and the number two, hope at gmail.com. I look forward to sharing more with you soon. Again, thank you for listening. And until our next episode, remember, we give all glory to God our Father.